guys, how's it going? So today we're just working on finishing up a few projects. So first of all, we picked up a load of trees at Far West Garden Center yesterday, one of which we had to remove the pot in order to fit it in the trailer because the pot was huge and the tree, it was really tall. Anyway, it just worked better to do that. It is B&B, so it's got a burlap sack around it and a wire cage. Um, so it's still like sitting there all held together, but it's exposed, so it, it's getting hot. We need to get that one in the ground, get it watered in. We're not gonna worry about the other trees that we picked up just yet. Um, what we want to do after the tree is then we're gonna head down to the Children's Relief Nursery and pot up their containers for the summer. And then we're gonna go to the college. We've got, I think, three or four more containers left and one in-ground area we have yet to plant. And then I think we're pretty much done there for this season, uh, except we do have some roses coming. We'll do that later on. But anyway, we just are gonna try to get all of those things done today, so that is, that's the deal. So I'm gonna go gather up a shovel and gloves and some bolt cutters and we'll head out to the new property and get that tree in the ground. Woo, it's bright. <laughs> Okay, can you put those in the gator, please? Be careful with them. Thanks, bud. You wanna have some gloves? These will work. These there you will, go. These will work. Yeah, your hands might be a little small for them, but they may work. Great job. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Make sure we go forward. That way, yep. That way. Oh, we're gonna go a little bit too far this way, so turn the wheel this way a little bit. There you go, a little too much, maybe now straighten it out. There you go. So this is the tree right here. This is the Blue Sky Serbian Spruce. I think it's gonna be perfect out here. We've got this huge bank of green in our neighbor's yard. This is a wonderful borrowed landscape actually right there. I love it. Um, there's lindens and pine trees right there. And so I really wanted something with a blue tone out here. We've got a scotch pine planted <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere right there, but that one will get really big. And you can kind of see the flagged out pathway, which will be green grass. Um, and if I get close on this, you can see the coloring. It's like a bicolor blue and green, which gives it kind of a frosted appearance. And did I just say it grows 30 by 15 zone four through nine? Immediately next to it, we've got a katsura or a red fox katsura tree. There's an autumn brilliant service berry. And then right behind me, there is a Corinthian linden so far. So the hole has already been started. This is like Aaron started to cut off the, um, the wire cage and stuff, but I think we're gonna try to drag it over by the rope so that we don't have to touch this tree. It is really pokey. Um, so we're gonna try to get it in its hole and then we'll cut off all the rest of this stuff. So it has been planted. Aaron is watering it in right now. This is the uh, angle that it looks the most straight from. <laughs> the trunk is completely wonky. So uh, really, like you can tell right here, like it goes kind of straight and then it turns to the left. But I think that's just the nature of the tree. So we made sure that it was straight down here and that's pretty much all you can do. We always have to consider too that the wind is gonna come and beat all of these trees from the west. So it's something we may have to stake up anyway. So we're gonna run drip to it eventually, like probably in the next day or two. We'll tap into this line and run a quarter inch over and then do a ring around the base of the tree. And then it can just water with all the rest of our new stuff out here. All right, so we can check tree planting off the list. So now we are gonna load up a bunch of these annuals that we have sitting here. Um, and we're gonna head to the, probably the relief nursery first because that job will take us like 10 minutes probably, I'm guessing, and then we'll finish up at the college. It's actually really nice. We still have the covered trailer from the garden center that we borrowed yesterday to pick up those trees. So we're gonna utilize that. We'll be able to fit everything in one truck today, Aaron. Nice. Instead of two trucks. So I'm Very thinking good. mostly all the bubblegum vistas. Let's get okay. lots of vistas and vertigos. Benjamin and I already loaded up a couple flats earlier. So you can see this is what I'm planning to do at the Relief Nursery. I have some fireworks penicetum, and then we're gonna do the above and beyond uh, recipe because they're just, it's such a good recipe and it always works. So we have Super Tuna Vista bubblegum, Vista fuchsia, Vista Silverberry. I'm gonna do six total Vistas in each pot, so two of each color and one of the grasses. It'll be simple but striking. 
Okay, we are down at the Children's Relief Nursery right now. You can see the four pots that we brought down here last year. We had them planted up for fall. Hey, Erin, did we plant these up prior to fall or was it just fall? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I do remember though fall because we brought down some squash and pumpkins and then we brought down some greens and branches to make them look a little bit wintry, pretty. Um, and now we are ready to add some summer color. I wish we would have done it like a month ago, but that's okay. Yeah. It'll be nice color for summer. So these are the dot containers from Crescent Garden. These are the ones, four of the original 14 that we had along our fence line. The little water, in, water indicator there, there's our water fill. So I need to check that there's plugs. Looks like that one has a plug uh, because we wanna make sure that they will be self-watering. We don't want this to be a chore for anybody. That one has a plug. Oh good, there's plugs in all of the pots. Yay. Aaron is pre-moistening all the soil and I'm just this topping them up. This is really nice for pre-moistening. Yeah. Because it kind of like fluffs up the soil. Uh-huh. It's like a tiller. Yeah. Water slash tiller. Yep, so I'm just topping them up. Okay, so this is what we're going with. You can see the grass in the center, bubble gum, one in the front, one in the back, two fuchsias and two silverberries. And I think I might use another grass in here and not put flowers. This one is not self-watering and the reservoir is not huge. So I wanna put something in there that can, I don't know, withstand a little less water. Okay, they are all done. Like instant beauty up here. Look at all these plants and all that color. Went with just one of the fireworks penicetum in the tall container. I think that'll bring some really nice height. And then it'll be mirrored in the centerpiece of these containers with the bubblegum, fuchsia, and silverberry. I think the pinks look really good against the blue of this building. I really should bring a mirror with me or something. Maybe some extra makeup, perhaps. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we did realize about um, halfway through planting that we think three out of the four planters are plugged, which we've heard can happen. It hasn't happened to us up until this point, so we've used them for several years and not had a problem. Um, so I think what we're gonna do is take the, the uh, self-watering reservoir plug out tomorrow. We're gonna come back and uh, bring the right socket to get those out, because uh, they're pretty tight. We'll just drain the self-watering reservoir and we'll just treat them as normal containers that you have to water every single day uh, for this season until we remove all of this stuff in the fall to replant them. And in that, at that point, I heard, I've heard from other people who've used these, that you can drill out the holes possibly or clean out the holes to the self-watering reservoir and that's the one benefit or the one uh, con not benefit the one con to these containers is that the self-watering reservoir is enclosed you can't take it apart and dismantle it to clean it um, so anyway I've heard that this could happen I just hoped it never would but I'm really happy with how they look we're gonna come back tomorrow to take the the plugs out and I'm also gonna bring some sunflowers and some other things for the kids to grow in the race beds in the back. So anyway, now at this point, we're gonna head up to the college and finish up down there. Okay, back down at the college now. Uh, we're gonna plant up this long container here. There's another long container right down there in front of the physical plant. And then the other one is actually kind of on the other side of this building. And this is the arts, art building. So anyway, three of them that are 14 inches wide and I think like 58 inches long or so. Full sun, clearly. Full, full sun. guys see that bed right there alongside the greenhouse that's where we're heading next oh I see drip tubing that is nice and it looks like it went off today and the coverage is looking pretty good that's awesome okay so we're just gonna pack this thing full of some pretty stuff Well, we 
we've got them all watered in. How you feeling, Aaron? Hot. Hot, yeah. Hey guys, so it's actually a new day. When we got done planting everything yesterday, I was just all in. It was so hot and these poor plants looked like they were struggling so much. I just decided, you know what? Let's just come back here in the morning, uh, give them a chance to kind of rebound because when you do plant things out when it's 100 plus degrees um, and these plants have been a little bit more used to protection and a little bit more shade, oftentimes you'll see them wilt pretty hard and it could be a couple of days before they rebound. And then last night we had a 50 mile per hour dust storm come through and I thought, oh, we just finished these plants off for sure. So I'm very pleased that they are looking, that they actually look better than they did yesterday after I got done planting. So I thought I would just show you these three containers um, and then we'll go over to the greenhouse area that we got planted as well. And um, it did give us time last night to gather up the rest of the things that we need to fix the pots at the relief nursery. I'm gonna plant up a couple of their raised beds and I hope that the wind this morning is okay like the audio, because um, I'm not wearing a mic and I didn't even think about it. Anyway, this video is kind of a hot mess. <laughs> at this point, but here's one of the containers. I'm really happy with it. We went with three Fireworks Penicetum and four Vermillionaire Kufia right here. You can see those, those will fill in beautifully and we'll have some nice height there. And then around the exterior here, I just used three different kinds of plants and I alternated. So we have Plum Dandy Alternanthera, which is a beautiful alternative to sweet potato vine if you wanna try something different. And then we've got Supertunia Honey and Supertunia Really Red. So it'll just be a very warm toned, very bright container. Let's go look at that one. Oh, this one looks way better than yesterday. Um, so we've got three Vermilion Arcufia and four Gallardia, the heated up yellow, which this plant right here, whether or not you're planting it in the heat or wind or whatever, it always seems to be a little bit tender until it roots in a bit. And so yesterday they were pretty wilted um, and it looked very, very sad. I'm sure we could probably show you a picture of what it looked like right when we got done. But they turn into one of the most glorious, colorful, big annuals ever. And I really love them. It's totally worth the little bit of tenderness right in the beginning. So our that was our centerpiece plants. And then along the rim here, I alternated between the Alternanthera Plum Dandy and Supertunia Royal Velvet. So this will be a really like bright jewel tone, purple, red, and yellow. All right, one more container. Okay, so this is the last one. It's actually kind of nice because when I planted it yesterday, it was in the full sun, and this is a fairly light colored wall. So it was so bright and hot over here. It was kind of hard to show the details. So we've got one Fireworks Penicetum, two Vermilion Arcufia, three Gallardia. The one in the center was a little small, but it'll, it'll fill in. And then we uh, rimmed, Planted around the rim, Super Tunia Royal Velvet, Super Tunia Really Red. So I did use the same plants in all three containers. Because they're fairly close together, I wanted them to have some kind of a cohesive look in terms of color palette. I just kind of changed up the design a little bit. So now let's head to the greenhouse. Okay, so here is the last bed that we planted up. Just this raised bed along the greenhouse. I only used three different types of plants, but I think it's gonna be incredibly striking once they grow and fill in. So in the back, you can kind of see the layers from this angle here. We've got 12 vertigo penicetums, and those get huge. Like they're gonna completely mask the side of the greenhouse here. And then the layer down, kind of going through the center there, they are the super blue angelonia. And so those grow 30 to 40 inches tall. They'll be a beautiful second layer. They have long panicles of blue blooms. And then, of course, along the edge, we did Super Tunia Vista bubblegum, and those will probably crawl out several feet past the raised bed, and they'll be full of that bright pink color. So anyway, Aaron and I came in here, and I kind of laid things out. He came through with the auger and uh, dug all the holes for me. We put some flower tone in the ground and then got them all planted. So I think now that those containers in the greenhouse area are planted, I don't think we have very much left to do if at all down here, I gotta check my list. I do think we're gonna have to replace a couple of plants by the fountain area. Um, they're still working on getting the drip up and going in that spot and they've been hand watering and as you can see, it's been horribly windy and hot. Um, so when you plant that many plants, you're likely to lose a couple. Um, so we might go do some fill-ins there, but other than that, everything's looking pretty good. We just need to keep them consistently watered um, and that's that's what they're they're handling all of that so it'll just be fun to drive down here periodically throughout the summer and see how things are doing so now we're going to head back down to the relief nursery take the plugs out of the self-watering containers plant up the raised beds i've got some really cool birdhouses that gardener supply sent out last year before everything kind of hit the 
the fan. We were gonna do some projects with the kids and weren't able to, so I'm gonna drop those off. Anyway, just buttoning up some stuff. All right, so we are back at the Relief Nursery. We've got some pretty stuff to put in their raised beds. And then these are the birdhouses that Gardener Supply sent out. They're really cool. So raw wood so the kids can paint them. And there's suction cups on the back so they'll suction to the classroom windows. And there's little holes on either side the birds can get in and out. And then the front of course is clear too so you can just see all the activity that's going on. Um, the top kind of, it just opens up like that. There's like a little screen here so that you can take that out. It pops out and you can clean it if you need to. Anyway, I just thought that that was really cool. I'm excited to give them those. I'm just gonna take those into the office now and then they're gonna open up a side gate for us so we can go take care of all the flowers. Okay, so here are the raised beds. For some reason, I only thought there was two back here, but I think that these plants will all get big enough that we will be able to fill up most of the space. We've got some of the new Saturn Helianthus sunflowers, some Lady Godiva orange calendula, some yellow marigolds, Super Junior really red, and a flat of the Buried Treasure white strawberries. I'm going to amend each bed with the flower tone, and then we'll get after the planting. my goodness you guys don't those look so fun and bright and cheerful that's what I was going for and they're gonna fill in like Aaron was actually asking me <laughs> like did you bring too many plants I don't think you would ever have too many plants but we've got three of the Saturn helianthus so the sunflowers down the center of each box and those grow I think the tags say two to four feet tall and wide and because we get so much Sun here and so much heat they typically get that big like the four feet size <laughs> so those in and of themselves will be a nice big bulk back here and then the lady godiva oranges will get quite large too and we've got four let's see there's four in the front box kind of flanking the sunflowers and then we've got four in that second box and then i've got two in the last box over there and then i just dotted the rest of the plants just kind of around so we've got the buried treasure strawberries in there let's see so there there's one like right there one here one in that corner, and then the marigolds and the super junior really red. And they do have drip. So they just, they came out here and cleaned the beds up knowing we were gonna come plant. So they pulled weeds and pulled the drip out so that it was nice and uh, easy access. So they'll come out and they'll rerun the drip down each one of the boxes, which is really nice, very handy. I just love it. Like when you look at the surroundings around the fence and the weeds and stuff, and then you look in here to see something so tidy and so bright. I think that's such a cheerful thing. So other than taking the plugs out of the bottom of these self-watering containers, I think we're pretty much done, and there's really not a lot to that. I brought some sockets so that we could um, get those little plugs out. So we're gonna go do that, drain the, the reservoirs, and then I think we're done. So anyway, I hope this video was interesting to you guys. I feel like it's all over the place, but I do feel good that these projects are buttoned up for now and we'll be checking on them periodically throughout the summer. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.